you are welcome back to my YouTube channel. You're welcome back to today's YouTube live stream, FSWG live stream. Uh, my name is Lori Elijah, as you already know. And this is Frank speaking with Lori. I am the girl with the T. And um, let's see, let's see, let's see. How many of you are online? Okay, so I guess you guys are still on your way. But uh, once again, you're welcome. And as usual, I cannot fail to appreciate all of you for turning up, for coming through for today's live stream. I mean, I recognize that today is the weekend, so a lot of you might have a lot of things to do today, especially. But still, you still made our time to join me on today's conversation. So for that, I am very much grateful. Thank you so much for coming through. Um, this live stream today, I don't want it to be too lengthy. I don't want it to be over an hour. But there are a lot of things I want to address. Aside from what you see on my thumbnail, I also want to talk about um, the viewing, the viewership, or if the show is going to air in Nigeria or not. So I'm going to be touching up on that very soon. But first of all, let me do the usual, all right? Let me see my people online and shout out your name. Yes, look at them, beautiful people. Um, <laughs> hi. Hi, I'm seeing Natural Oma. I'm seeing Jane Cynthia. I'm seeing Evelyn. Hi, Evelyn. Oh my God, Evelyn. I don't even know what to do with our case, but don't worry. We're going to sort it out one way or the other. Um, nice love. Hi, KK. Hello, 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 K. Uh, I'm seeing Egbele. Hi. Michael Essie. Mickey, Mickey, Mickey. <laughs> Hi, Mickey. Um, sunflowers from South Africa. It's good to have you on here. Um, there's also Rosa Tambi. Hi. There's Kote Samwala. Hi. It's been a while. Um, Agnes Kamati. You're welcome. Paul Sese. Hi, Dupe Omiwade. Dupe is here. Dupe, I'm so happy to see you here. <laughs> there's Triple G. Hello, hello, hello. Wow. Triple G is just going straight up with her questions or his questions. So we're going to talk about all of that soon. Um, Dibani, welcome, 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 everybody. Welcome, everybody. If I did not mention your name, welcome, welcome, everybody. Okay, so um, during the week, gosh, I received a lot of emails. I received a lot of DMs on Instagram, people asking me questions. Glory, channel 198 of DSTV is not showing on my TV. And most of people that sent those messages, they are from Nigeria, from Ghana. So they sent a lot of messages like that. Ah, me, I was shy, confused, like, what's going on? So I decided to check, because to be very frank, I wasn't really bothered to even check. Because for me, hey, Sunday comes, I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, click on that channel and watch Big B in Zanzi season three. <laughs> but then I went and checked, and... The channel was not there. I tried several times. It wasn't even there. I did different technical things here and there. Um, call one or two persons, try doing things. It wasn't still opening. I said, okay, what's going on? So, the deal is, I've actually heard um, rumors that Nigeria might not be showing, uh, rather airing the show. But I wasn't really sure. I don't like following rumors, guys. I like getting facts first before believing anything. So, I decided to go ahead and make some contact with some very important persons that could actually give me the accurate information. And it seems as though everything is still kind of in the works. But then over there in South Africa, the the channel is actually, okay, not the actual channel, but the other channel is actually open and everyone is just waiting for the show to start tomorrow. But for Nigeria, I don't know, guys. I don't know what's going on. So this is what I'm just going to advise. Let's keep our fingers crossed. If it airs, oh, well, I'm good. If it does not air, I'm sure that there are actual reasons why the show will not air in Nigeria. I am not saying that Big Brother in Zanzi Season 3 will not air in Nigeria. I am saying if it does not. Because as per the process here in Nigeria, if there is to be a new season of BB Niger, Already from the beginning of this week, that the show will start on the weekend, from Monday, that channel 198 is already open, right? The channel is open and um, the Big Brother Niger sit tune 
is already pom, 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 pom. it's already playing non-stop right it's already playing non-stop and we are seeing the poster there oh yeah big brother nigeria is soon to be back you know you're seeing the countdown it's ongoing everything is just basically live and direct and then and the excitement is building up everybody is you know on top waiting for sunday or saturday whenever the launch of the show will be so that is the way it's actually done over here and i know as well that usually um viewership is actually allowed to people in south africa and some other african countries especially with the previous season six of big brother Nigeria that ended the shire eye season i think um the multi-choice nigeria they actually or the organization as the organizers they actually gave viewership to a lot of african countries even to viewers in the uk which is actually a very very smart business idea if you ask me because they capitalized on that opportunity to um make money off show max right they really really use like they leverage on that that time that period to really advertise show max to make money off show max they got a lot of registrations i'm sure they actually did well from the figures that the ceo um, of multi choice actually read out on the day that um, white money got his um, prices and his money However, for our South African brothers, I don't know what is going on, guys, to be very honest. But I think I talked about it briefly last week during our live stream that, okay, it wasn't during the live stream, it was on one of the videos I uploaded about the sexual orientation of South Africa as a country. Yes, I mentioned some of those things, although I do not want to think that that should be like a major concern. I do not want to think. Also, we also put it, I have to put it into perspective the role of the NBC here, right? This, this group of persons, they are the ones in charge of um, checking, more like the watchdog of whatever goes on air in Nigeria, okay? And that was why in the previous seasons of Big Brother Nigeria, we did not see shower hours. We did not see a lot of crazy, raunchy things as people would have loved to see. Because over here in Nigeria, there are certain rules that uh, media houses really need to follow. Yes, so as not to get into trouble with the government. But to be very honest, guys, I have no idea. I am not an insider in the grand scheme of things. I do not know what is going on over there. But the news I heard from a very, very reliable source is that they were having meetings and still deliberating on if Big Brother and Zamzi season three should air in Nigeria or not. And so that explains why that particular channel is not on DSTV at the moment, like Nigerian DSTV, because it's quite confusing. I know that there's just one DSTV, but what I don't understand is if there's a South African DSTV and if there's a Nigerian DSTV, I do not know. I also learned from another reliable source, yes, who is an insider that um, the show is actually going to air in Nigeria, but then, <laughs> it still boils down to the question of it still boils down to the question of why can't we see the channel just yet? Sorry guys, I just received something. Okay, interesting. So Mickey, Mickey, thank you so much. Mickey just sent me um, a picture of his TV screen right now. Mickey, if you can drop in the comment section if this is channel 198 or if this is the Zanzi Magic channel 161, I would really appreciate. So I don't know if I can show you guys. Ricky just sent me a picture of his TV screen. I don't know if you guys can see it. Where am I going? Okay, this is Mickey's TV screen. Um, he just showed me um, the Big Brother Zamzi Season 3 logo is right there, starting when the countdown is there. So, Mickey, please let us know. Let me see if he dropped any comments in the comment section. Let us know if... Okay, oh, it's 198. Awesome. So that means... Um, just as my source told me, deliberations are still ongoing if the show should air in Nigeria or not. But then for me, I still feel like it still doesn't really make sense. By now, if really they are having meetings, they should have made up their mind if they are going to show, if they are going to air it on in Nigeria or not. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because at the end of the day, well, they probably have their reasons if they don't want to show it in Nigeria and it's fine right? It's fine. 
because we also have our own shows that are still coming up as well. So we can be very patient and wait it out. But then if you ask me business-wise, is it really a good business idea not to want to air the show in certain African countries? I do not think it's actually a very good business idea, except the organizers of Big Brother and Zamzi are not looking forward to profiting out of the show. <laughs> Maybe it's a charity season. <laughs> yes, they probably want to, you know, create a season for the sake of charity. You know, whatever proceedings they get from it, from the few people that will subscribe in the few countries that they have given access to watch the show, maybe just maybe the, the proceedings of that, maybe they're going to donate, uh, donate it to charity. I don't know. But looking at it realistically, is it really, really smart to not want to air the show in other countries? Because guys, look at it this way. Which country has the largest viewing audience when it comes to Big Brother in Africa? Of course, everybody knows that the answer to that question is Nigeria. Yes, everybody knows. Everybody knows. Okay, okay. Um, you people that are sending me messages on Instagram, um, please just hold on with the messages. I'm going to respond to all of you. All right? so I don't keep on checking my phone and looking at what I'm saying. All right, please, after the live stream, just send all your messages. Bombard me with the messages and I'll respond. Anyways, as I said, that if you ask me, I feel strongly that Nigeria has basically the largest viewing population when it comes to reality TV shows like Big Brother Niger. Yes, caps, no caps, no caps. I'm not even bragging, but that is what it is. Yes. So if the organizers of Bibi and Zanzi are fully aware of this fact and they know quite all right that if they air the show in Nigeria, they're going to actually really, really cash out why did they decide or why are they still contemplating if that is what they are doing? Why are they still thinking about not airing the show in Nigeria? Or should we just lose hope and just say that they are actually not airing the show in Nigeria? Because hey, how many hours do we have left? The show launches tomorrow. So we still do not even know. But anyways, it's all good. Let me, let me just leave it there, all right? I'm still counting down as well. I will definitely let you all know again if finally the show is going to air in Nigeria by tomorrow, all right, before the launch time. Otherwise, we just have to make do with social media and catch up on all the juicy details. Um, I will definitely look for ways on how to um, give you guys the updates of the show, although I still do not know how I'm going to do that just yet, but I'm still trying to figure something out. We'll, we'll, I'll see how to work my way around it. Um, let me go through your comments. Um, Tremofa said, guys, we in Kenya can watch in Go TV. Nice. B JJ said the countries that the show will be aired in are those against the LGBT community. Okay, so I mean you mean the countries that the show will not be aired in. Okay. Even it's saying if it works in Ghana, then it definitely must work in Nigeria. Namibia normally has no problem with TV shows aired in South Africa. We are sister countries. Yeah, the show is currently, in fact, that 198 channel is currently not showing um, in Ghana as well, not just in Nigeria. Um, Sonny said, South Africa is not the problem, Glory. The rules of Nigeria is a problem. Shah Awa and absolutely gay. And exactly, yeah. I mean, the last video I did, I think I put out that video on Monday, I actually talked about it. Yes, the sexual orientation of South Africa and also Nigeria being um, against, or Niger I'm not saying Nigerians now, but Nigeria, the Nigerian law, it does not really support, you know, same-sex marriage and relations like that. So you're probably right, but we don't know yet. We'll find out eventually. Um, what Lubukola said, maybe they got info and advice not to air it in Nigeria. I don't know why they should be, they should deliberate on it, honestly. Probably, you're right. And, um, and Temple said, I heard the organizers are still discussing with DSTV. Maybe there is problem somehow. Yeah, this same thing you talked about. That was the exact same information I got from my, <coughs> sorry. That was the same information I got from my source. Yes, who is actually an insider um, that they were still having meetings. But I am thinking, what kind of meetings have they been having since on Monday or since last week? 
that is lasting till a few hours before the show launches finally i mean they should make up their minds if they're not going to end the show in certain african countries nigeria xyz um, ghana then they should just let the people know and put them out of their misery instead of dragging with their with their decision making process i mean it has taken too long to be very honest um uh, Dennis said it's airing in Ghana, so I'm sure it might air in Nigeria. So the question is, when did it start airing in Ghana? As at yesterday, people were still complaining that they could not have access to the channel, even though they had upgraded to DSTV Compact. So please let me know when exactly it started airing in Ghana. Um, Sally said, hi, Gloria, I can confirm that Kenya will not be able to view, view BBM. I made the call yesterday to DSTV and they confirmed this. It's very unfortunate, but we know. Wow, that's very interesting. And somebody else here is saying that Kenyans can actually view the show. Okay, okay. And funny enough, my second source actually had to ask one of his or our bosses and the boss said it was going to air in Nigeria. But then we're still waiting for this meeting that you're having to deliberate. So let's see what's going to come out of the meeting. Clan said, maybe the show may clash with Big Brother Niger's season. Okay, so I do not think that is going to be so because if Big Brother Niger, before there's going, if there is going to be another season of Big Brother Niger, um, there has to be a reunion if the organizers care to give us a reunion anyways. But I'm sure that the organizers will be really tempted to want to do a reunion because to be very honest, there's been a lot of drama like stupid crazy annoying stupid especially drama going on amongst all the shiny high housemates since they graduated from biggest mansion so i'm sure that it's going to make for rich content for the organizers to want to be pushed to give us a reunion of the season six of the show and so the reunion has to come first and usually the reunion happens between june and july or let's say june yeah the reunion usually lasts for three weeks and then after the reunion, almost immediately following it is a new season of the show. So I do not think that Big Brother in Zambia season three is going to be able to run from tomorrow, 23rd of January till June. That's going to be very, very ridiculous. So I do not think it's a question of if it's going to clash with a new season of Big Brother Niger. I do not think so. I think it could be probably for um, laws not to clash. Probably, I don't know. Let's just see how it is. Keep our fingers crossed. Um, so Dennis is still saying 198 is working in Ghana also. Okay. Agnes said, I am in Namibia and it's saying one day to go on 198. Also, that means Namibia can actually watch it. Um, Michael said, I will give you my DSV login details, Lori, so you can watch it offline. It doesn't show them there. Awesome. Thank you, Michael. But I don't know if that's going to work. Yes, I don't worry. I actually made a lot of, did a lot of technical findings about this thing as if I was an engineer myself. But Mike, I don't worry. We're going to have an offline conversation about it. Okay, we're going to have an offline conversation. I don't want to beat around the bush with the small, small technical jargons that I gathered over the week. Woof. Um, in terms of saying, yeah, it's showing now in South Africa, it's it's been three days now. I just want to know if 198 is showing also. He said, Michael just confirmed that 198 is actually showing. Um, uh, okay, so Clan said, even in Uganda, there is no channel yet. So that means Uganda is also part of the potentially restricted countries. Let's see how it goes. Uh, more comments down the line. Yes, Michael, we are going to we're going to we are going to see in the other room. <laughs> oh, so Danny said it started airing in Ghana today. Perfect. Yes, because I am very very sure that as I yesterday I was still getting messages and emails from people asking me that Oglo is it air is the channel showing in Nigeria? It's not showing in Ghana. So I'm I'm very sure that it wasn't on yesterday. So if it's now showing in Ghana today. Hmm. Let's keep our fingers crossed, dear Nigerians. <laughs> Let's keep our fingers crossed and see if it's going to start airing, all right? If it's going to start airing, all right? 
I just said that you people should please hold on with the messages to after the live stream. I'm still receiving emails. Please have mercy. Um, okay, so Gifty is saying, Dennis, are you sure? I can tell you Ghana isn't going to show. Okay, so this is about to be a debate, but let's just wait and see what happens by the end of today with Ghana. Um, <clears throat> Tim says, I hope by the end of today, they will come to an agreement. If not, so Nigerians will catch up on live stream, but I hope the STV Nigeria will allow BBM. Well, let's see how it goes. Okay, so Tremovat is asking, Gloria, I'm asking, can we in KM be able to watch? And if yes, which channel? So Tremovat, the problem is, I cannot categorically start counting the countries that have been restricted. And the reason for that is because, one, I feel like the BB in Zamzi organizers, I don't know, I feel like they are kind of not particularly organized. And I'll tell you why. Let me, let me take our time to explain that. Now, comparing the way they've been dishing out information, you know, with BB in Zamzi, compare it with BB Ninja. Um, Baby Ninja, I feel like the organizers, they've been able to upgrade to some extent, especially with the previous season that just ended. So what they, what they did was they were able to give information on the voting process, the voting system. They were able to give information on the price, prices to be won. They were able to give information, especially on countries that had access to view the share. They were also able to give information as to... Um, uh, guys, I mean, all these things people are asking me right now, Big Brother Niger organizers, they were able 100% to provide every single detailed information. So people were fully equipped, yes, and they knew what to expect, especially when it came to restricted countries. I felt like that was fair enough on that one part because they were able to prepare people's minds that, hey, anticipate your country can view, hey, do not even kill yourself over it, your country can love you. So people were able to just, Look for other means to watch the show, of course, because they love the show. But with this BB Zandi, guys, we're very honest there. Eh? Seeking information has been like searching for a needle in a haystack. You are looking for information. The only kind of information you have access to are information that's like outdated, information from as far back as 2015, 2014. And for me, I find it so ridiculous and exhausting. Yes, I mean, the information is not really out there. By now, I was expecting that they would have brought out their list that, okay, in Africa, these are the countries that will totally have access to viewing the show. But by now, we still do not know. We don't know. You know, it's now a guessing game. Oh, is your country watching? Ah, my neighbor, hey, all the way in Ghana, Namibia, is your country watching? So it's, I find it very, very exhausting and kind of unprofessional. And it's making me think that is it that this people did not really plan this one at all, or is it over enthusiasm that, okay, ah, BB Niger happened, they got huge, massive traffic. So let's just go ahead and do ours. And now they're trying to do it and they're not really putting things in place. So look at it this way. The show is going to start airing tomorrow anyways. What should people be looking forward to? I don't even know the, the prizes to be won, to be very honest. I don't even know the prizes to be won. You know, so the only information I have about the show at the moment, to be very frank with people, is who the new host will be and the fact that the show is actually starting tomorrow. <laughs> it's very exhausting, guys, to be very honest. So for those of you who are asking me, will my country be able to view, please don't blame me if I cannot answer that question.
The first time I sat in front of a camera, I was scared. I had a lot of self-doubt. I wasn't even sure if YouTube had space for a commentary creator like me. I love doing reviews. I love doing commentaries. I love doing analysis of movies, trending topics, reality TV shows, and many other issues. But I wasn't confident enough to think that YouTube would accept me. <laughs> that was what I thought. It's four years later and I've got my YouTube 100,000 award and a personal note from the CEO of YouTube. <laughs> I am so excited. Wow. <laughs> this right here is three years of consistency and passion. And of course, my amazing FSWG community. This award is dedicated to every single member of my FSWG family. Thank you all so much, guys. I am super, super excited. And to all aspiring YouTube content creators, here is a secret for you. For every content, there is always an audience waiting and ready to watch. Hey, stop right here. Don't go anywhere. You are especially welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Lori Elijah and this right here is frankly speaking with Lori. I am the girl with the tea. I give detailed analysis of reality TV shows like Big Brother Niger, like Nigerian Idols, like The Voice Nigeria. You know, basically, any reality TV show that actually interests you, it automatically becomes my interest as well. I did try to carry over my head. <laughs> I give detailed analysis, I give detailed reviews. I run commentaries also because I want us to have fun, I want us to catch crews, I want us to, you know, vibe to stuff like that. And um, reality TV shows are not the only kind of content that I put out on my channel. I also do movie reviews. So you see this Glory Elijah of a girl, eh? Mm. She's a very, very boring sport. Guys, for real. I am super, super boring. However, whenever I feel like passing my time, you know, just having my own fun, chilling, being in a zen mode, I catch up on movies, which I find very, very interesting or exciting. But also, guys, I love reviewing those annoying ones because, hey, we have to call them out. You cannot come and waste my data. You cannot come and waste my precious time watching some really annoying movies. And I also talk about trending social topics because, of course, this life has to be balanced, okay? It's not all about entertainment and fun all the time. We also need to talk about those serious issues that concerns me, that also concerns you. Okay, guys, sorry about that. I feel as though <clears throat> these organizers, they, heard, they overheard my little rant and they got really pissed and decided to disconnect my network. You need to see the battle. I've been engaging myself with this bloody network. Look like everywhere here is scattered. I wish I could show you guys, but it's fine. Um, thank you so much for waiting it out with me. Yes, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. But we are fighting. We're going to continue this conversation, whether network likes it or yes. So um, I got back and I saw a truckload of questions. Let me see. Comments, questions, let me see. Oh, yes, um, Olu Bukola, it was a loss of connection, but we're back. We're back. Um, <laughs> um, okay. Okay, so um, Ntembu is giving us some info here. He said it's two million plus car and house. Interesting. Nice, 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 nice. Hi, Faiz. I am good. So Sibanda is saying, hello, Glory. I personally think that South Africa wants all DSTP users from all countries to view, but it's up to the restrictions in your country, whether they want you to view it or not. Yes, you have a point, and I cannot disagree with you on that. Um, we've talked about it before. Yes, moral grounds, sexual orientation, all of that could also be an additional factor to the restriction that we're experiencing at the moment. Um, Gifty said, yes, Uganda is part of the country is not sharing it. Hmm, okay. Um, Tochi Anazi said, 
Quick question, Gloria. Do you think the issue is from Nigeria? What if the organizers here in Nigeria don't want it to be aired in Nigeria so that people don't lose interest when July comes? Mm, that is actually very interesting. And to be very frank, I think you also have a point, Dochi. But if you think about it, I think it's going to definitely be a win-win situation for BB South Africa organizers and BB Nigeria organizers. Look at it this way. Should be the DSTV decoders that we have in Nigeria. When people subscribe to it, it goes to it goes to the multi choice here in Nigeria, right? And when people subscribe to the multi choice, it goes to the multi choice Africa, right? So it's not like they are going to be dragging for supremacy over who has the best show or not. The truth is, maybe South, um, South Africa took a break for a while. At least, the best of my understanding, they took a break for a while, and now they are back. So it's quite natural for South Africans to be very excited and have high hopes and expectations for what the new season of the show will be like, right? Because all through the time that BB South Africa, BB and Zamzi was on break, they had to make do with BB Niger and they've been showing massive support. Yes, I mean, if you check through all the fan base that still exists today, most of them are, it's basically a combination of people from different parts of Africa. Right, of course, and South Africans as well. So I do not think the BB Niger organizers will be very small-minded to that extent to feel that oh, if they allow BB South Africa to air in the Nigerian airwaves here, then when BB Niger comes, people might lose interest. I do not think so. As a matter of fact, I feel like curiosity will make people to want to watch a new season of Big Brother Niger. Because think about it this way. People have so far been used to keeping up with every new season of Big Brother Niger for the past quite five years now, right? Or quite four years now. So people have been keeping up with every new season. So Baby and Zanzi is starting tomorrow. If people in Nigeria or other viewers from other parts of Africa or around the world watch it, I feel like the bar would be either raised up high or probably drop and people will be looking forward to seeing what BB Niger has in store for them. People would be looking forward to, you know, doing comparisons that, hmm, okay, this is what BB and Zamzi had to offer. Let's see if we are going to enjoy BB Niger more than BB and Zamzi. And so as a matter of fact, I have a strong feeling that there will even be more subscriptions. Yes. And viewership for BB Niger. And aside that, you also need to take into account the fact that there's going to be space, probably a two-month space in between. So the show starts tomorrow and it ends in March. And then there's April, May, and then there's June when we'll have the reunion, possibly. And then there's July, probably, when a new season will start. So that's just called roughly three-month space. So people are going to be bored. Yeah. And there's this spirit that goes with reality TV shows. People watch one particular one and then they are very excited and then the excitement kind of dies down and then they are looking forward to another reality TV show, especially one that they have a soft spot for. So I don't want to think that the organizers might be thinking that way now. I don't want to think. So Michael is saying 1,000 rand in the black market is 33,000 naira. Okay, what's bringing about the conversation? Mm. So, Brigo is saying multi choice is the producer of BBN and BBM. I think that's supposed to be Endemo. I'm not sure if that is multi choice. I'm thinking that's Endemo. But then, Elizabeth is saying, oh, great. who will do the reviews for us anyways in Zimbabwe and we will be watching? Maybe you can actually give me updates for a change. Eh? <laughs> Um, Okafor Jen Cynthia is asking how much is 2 million rands in Naira. I think we'll have to Google that. And if we are Googling it, that's going to probably be like bank rates. So bank rate is usually lower than black market rates. Me, I like black market rates. Yeah. So we'll have to actually Google that. If you just, just type that in Google and you will see the answer. Okay. Um... Let me see. So Gifty is saying DSTV Malawi, Gambia, Ghana, Nigeria, Ethiopia, Tanzania, and two other African countries aren't going to show BB and Zamzi. Interesting. Interesting. Pamela said 198 on holiday, it was aired, but now it's closed. Very true. Very true. It's closed now. Um, 
Okay, Nita is saying two million rand is to be won. Nice. Um, B JJ is saying the list of countries is out, but not a lot of countries are not there. Hence, people keep asking about their access. Okay, true. Um, Sibo saying hi, Glory. Not that I am defending South Southy multi choice. I mean, after so many years, they have not been airing. It's kind of tough to venture to other countries. Possible they are testing the waters. Yeah, you have a point. You have a point. You have a point. Let's pray tomorrow in Nigeria to air. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, guys. Um, I think we've done justice to that part of the conversation. Yeah, people asking questions about um which channel will it show or not so guys what our advice is honestly do not kill yourself over it thank god we're in the age of social media and um with social media you can easily catch up if you are that interested in the show yes don't stress yourself over it and um just enjoy just go with the flow right on social media i'm very sure that there's going to be information i personally i will see what i can do I'm trying to work something out, you know, in the case of the show not being aired in Nigeria, I'm not making any promises. I don't know. I'm not making any promises, but I'm trying my best to work out something from over here. If it works out, I'm going to be giving reviews like never before. But if it doesn't work out, we're going to kind of improvise. We'll see how it's going to go. You guys know how I do my own thing. I cannot come and analyze what I do not know. I cannot come and review what I am not sure of. So I do not mislead people, all right? I've never been one to want to mislead people with my analysis. So I don't want to come and put one fake thumbnail now that says, ah, this thing happened. And then when you watch the video, nothing actually happened. I do not like all those kind of contents, please. And those of you that know my channel very well, I don't like, I mean, I love clickbaits. I enjoy clickbaits as thumbnails, but... There's an extent to which I do my own clickbait. I try as much as possible not to be too extreme with my clickbait. So I don't want to be that content creator that will come and put a thumbnail that says, ah, this person killed this person. And the way you now watch my video, it, nobody killed anybody. I'm, I hope we understand. So I'm going to try my best and see how we can work our way, our way around it. And hopefully... We have fun together. Now, moving on directly to the actual conversation of this particular video, um, the organizers of Bibi Nzanti, they did something quite interesting over the week, and I actually loved what they did because it went as much as to confirm my suspicions, right, that I have been having of the show. So the first thing I saw, sorry, guys, I'm trying to look for the picture of what I want to talk about. Great, I found it. So... They brought out a list of housemates that people should actually expect, you know, from this new season of BB Zabzi. And it was quite interesting because it felt as though I was rereading the video I did about the kinds of strategies that people should expect from BB Zabzi. I believe we talked about it on Saturday's live stream, last week's Saturday's live stream. So what I saw here is the underdog, the lover, um, the one that just chills and observes, the strategist, and the one that attracts snitches, and the manipulator. And it was quite interesting, guys, because to be very frank with you, this, um, this selection that they did, honestly, this is what actually makes reality TV shows generally very, very interesting, right? Nobody wants to see only a goody two shoes on the reality TV show. Sometimes it gets boring. But when there's like, you know, a combination of different personalities, then it keeps the viewers on their toes, keeps them expectant of what to see next. And it also increases the entertainment value of the show. So um, in that video we did, we talked about the underdog, of course. We gave examples using um, seasons of Big Brother Niger as references, right? We talked about Lecon, the white money. We talked about the FA. We talked about people like that. And we also talked about those people that tried to squeeze themselves into that class of being the underdog, but it, don't, it just did not work for them because <laughs> their cover was blown. They were exposed in a very, very radical way. 
one person like that was Neil. Neil from the lockdown season. Oh my God, I would never forget Neil. Neil tried so hard. As a matter of fact, in my opinion, to some extent, Neil tried desperately to sell his narrative, to sell his story as an underdog. But it did not work. <laughs> I mean, people who knew Neil before the show started, and even after the show, they see the guy bawling, they see the guy, you know, with the, the family he's from. They just, they know, they know things about Neil. And so the guy went into the house, like, you know, stories about, ah, I used to chop Gary, chop him, you want to let us know that you suffered in this life. Like, you know, you want to suffer. Eh? But then the story did not fly. <laughs> because his personality, the way he even carried himself in the house, he did not actually even go well with that narrative that he was trying to sell to the viewing audience. And so the only way he found favor in the eyes of the viewers, to be very honest, was the fact that he was the games master. He was very innovative. I mean, we have to give him that. He was very innovative, very, very creative with the kind of games that he created in the house. And so in the next season, being the oracle of that season, Cross decided to want to step into Neil's shoes as the oracle, the game's master, but Cross did a very, very poor job of it. Yeah, did a very, very bad job of it. Creating the most boring, annoying, and sometimes irritating truth or dare games. Lemon yellow or lemon, lemon yellow black games. It was so annoying. There were times I felt like <sighs> breaking my TV. Yeah. But then the focus is not on cross today. So just as the BB and Zamzi organizers, you know, are giving us some highlights of the kind of housemates to expect, once again, we're having the underdog. And guys, I think I actually predicted all these things already. So I'm excited already that, hmm, okay, this is another level of predictions coming to pass. So the underdog is there. The lover is there. I mean, there is no reality TV show without a love story. It's going to be boring. And so from Big Brother and Zamzi, of course, we're expecting to see those housemates that are going to come into the house with a mission to create a love situation so that they will now have a fan base that's going to be fanning them and supporting them and creating um, a ship name for them um, using the beginning of their names and the end of the other person's name. They merge it together and then they create a very, very ridiculous ship name. You know, we've had some shippers' names over the years from Big Brother Niger, for example. We had had, um, uh, ah, the one I'll never forget is the Mary Kay. <laughs> Oh, but the way that ship crashed, oh my God, nobody saw it coming. But I actually did saw it coming. I saw it coming and I kept on talking about it, telling, warning. Everybody felt like Noreen was the bad, the bad belly person. So I decided to zip it and wait for those people to actually see it for themselves. But then it actually did happen. Yeah, so we had Mary Kay. <laughs> we had, um, um, what else? What else? We had um, Kid Rika. Let me just walk up fast and make us see if I did not even mention that one. We had Mary, we had Kabjuni. Yes, those ones, they started on a very, very weird note. But thankfully, they're married, they have a child, and they are happy, hopefully. So we had that one. We had, um, what was Ozo and Nengi? Please, can somebody pronounce, I, okay, when I share the link, somebody should please help me pronounce that name. I could never get it right. We had Ozon, is it Ozon? Ozone layer, or is it ozone? I don't know. I don't even care. Anyways, we had that one. We had, um, you know, we can't even call V and Neil's one V new. Doesn't really make sense. But they were a very, very strong ship. But then, I don't know. I think recently their ship actually capsized. And one of the parties has been doing a lot of talking and ranting on social media. I'm like, nobody really cares. Just zip it. But that's that one. Which other ships did we have? Anyways, guys, this video is not to remember the ships. Oh, we had Ban Teddy. We had, um, which one again did we have? Cross Gel. <laughs> this is very interesting. Cross Gel. Okay. We have that one. This season, who? Oh, Emma Rose. Are they still together? Are they still receiving gifts? Are they still kissing in public and holding hands in public? Somebody help me out. 
anyways, guys, I overheard one recording. <laughs> I saw that thing and I had a good laugh. So someone actually had access to the MRO's She Pass WhatsApp group. I never knew that that group still existed. I mean, those past two prayers are fasting, looking at this we will get married for real. Anyways, so <laughs> Cross actually revealed or leaked out a voice note, and this particular woman was ranting heavily about, oh, why would somebody in their group share something, video or picture, whatever, about Cross and Licoros? No, this group is for Emmanuel and Licoros. And like this person was vehemently upset. And I'm like, wow. <sighs> I wish I had so much time on my hands like that to be upset over such flimsy, flimsy, ridiculous issues in this life. Who is that? <laughs> I, like, for real, I was literally asking them, is that somebody's sister? Is that someone's mother? Is that someone's daughter? Actually getting really upset, vehemently, getting so pissed. It was so funny and ridiculous, you know? But that is that one, Sha. Oh, God. And then my favorite ship, Sanini, or is it Ninisa, or Saganini? I don't know, but Saga and Nini. I actually love those two people's relationship or whatever they claim to have. I mean, to date, Nini has not come out to show us her boyfriend. Not like we actually care. Not like we actually care. Not like we're actually really bothered. But what I, for one, was actually hoping, just a little bit of hope for, was that after all the noise she made about her boyfriend, finally, madam, at least show his face. Or oh, is it not worth seeing? Or well, are you ashamed of actually showing his face? No, but Nini has been so comfortable moving around in different circles with Saga. And showing off her fleet of cars that she has used over the years, of course, which we can never forget anyways. So now we know that, okay, most of the people that actually go into Biggie's house, they are not particularly underdogs. They're actually well-to-do people that come into Biggie's house to play a particular script that they have actually created for themselves to buy into the hearts of the audience, that is the viewing audience. And at the end of the season of every season of Vibrant Ninja, it actually works out for them because people get so gullible enough to buy all that crappy stories that they sell. I feel like I'm having a eureka moment right now. <laughs> Not like these are actually revelations, but because of course I actually talked about all these things before, but nobody believed me. Okay, some people actually believed me, but some people, they felt glory just had bad belly. But it feels good actually to be saying these things all over again because they're actually true and they actually did happen and are happening. I mean, I told you guys that MROs will not last. But it was all glory because you're getting older. You are not getting married. Somebody actually said that glory, you you go and get married so that you're not be hating on MROs. But they're not together anymore, are they? Anyways, let me read your comment. <laughs> Diffie's corner said that wasn't the worst. The worst I heard was that was an MRO shipper crying. That was so embarrassing. I mean, I see all these things. I, to be very honest, I get embarrassed on, on their behalf. Mm. I get embarrassed on their behalf. But anyways, not to deviate from the conversation once again, <laughs> let's talk about those ones, you know, those housemates that actually sit down and observe. To be very honest, some housemates, they come into Biggie's mansion. Whether it's Big Brother in Zamzi or Big Brother Nigeria, they come into Biggie's house and they have the audacity to sit down and be observing for two bloody weeks. Two bloody weeks. I mean, it's okay if you observe for two days only because, hey, you have to constantly remind yourself that, hey, this is a game. This is a competition, first of all. So I am here to compete and possibly win. Or if I do not win the cash prizes or the other prizes that comes with the cash prize, I'm actually here to win a name for myself, a worthy name for myself, a worthy status for myself, a worthy fan base. No, some people come into Biggie's house and then they sit down and then they are observing, 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 observing. No, Tony Badge actually made that mistake during the lockdown season. And then by the time she wanted to start showing herself, as in she was rudely, <laughs> brutally kicked out of the door. <laughs> it was so funny. And then during the reunion, she thought that she was going to shine. 
and she did not shine outside. I mean, she had a chance. She had the opportunity. She missed it. She totally missed it. And then which other person did we have that came into Biggie's house and was observing as if he was in his father's kingdom? Oh, last season we had Yusuf. Mm, we had Yusuf. Yusuf came in and he observed and observed until observation kicked him out of the house. I don't, to today, I, can't still, I still can't decide if that was Yusuf's real personality or not. Which other person came into Biggie's house over time to come and observe? Please, my South African brothers and sisters, for those of you that followed up on BB Exam season one and two, go ahead. Mention their names. Let's expose them in the comment section. You know, we're giving reminders out there to this new season of BB Exam House. That is if they have if they have access to gadget, if they have, have access to YouTube, and if they are able to even watch my video, let's just give them a, an advice or two. To let them know that you cannot afford to be into Biggie's house and then you go and sit down like a spectator. Spectators are even better because spectators, they are very, very active and engaging, you know. They are involved in shouting, screaming, cheering, whatever, you know, but they don't just sit down and tie their hands. But being just a plain freaking observer, like why did you even go into the house in the first place? Let me see if people can mention names. Um... B is saying, I think the fall back to observing once they see characters that might be a threat to be as Yes, I mean, it's okay to be an observer, but you only have at least one day to observe. Or you just need to even time yourself, please. Because the truth is, for every Big Brother show, whether it be in Zambia or in Niger, the show begins the moment those housemates step foot into the mansion. The viewers are already viewing. They're already observing as well. They're already watching. They're already looking out to seeing, oh, who should I support this person? Oh, who is more beautiful? Oh, who is more, like, who is that person that looks manipulative? Who is that person that looks like a player? Who is that person that looks like a, a, a playboy or a playwoman? Who is that person that looks like a lover man, a lover woman? People are already observing. So leave the observation to us 100%, please. And not you being a player in the mansion and then you're going in there. And then you're spending one week to observe. I don't understand. You're chopping free food. You're chopping free food in biggest house. Man, people are going to be voting. They're going to be using that money to pump food into your skin. You're sitting there, you're observing for real. <clears throat> Anyways, Peter is saying, I felt for Maria that overplayed her part and turned from sweet Maria to bad energy Maria. <laughs> oh, yes, innocent company saying, Jane Paul. See that Jay Paul there? I don't even want to talk because I just felt like Jay Paul just came and spoiled his chances of making it big. And I heard, I heard something that Jay Paul was supposed to be in Biggie's house in season five, and then I heard that he had COVID, and then I heard that Tricky T went into the house, and then I heard that he came back this season, and then I heard that no, I did not hear this one. I actually observed that instead of him to make the most of the second chance given to him. He went in there to go and observe. And then when he realized, or maybe he felt that he was a favorite of the viewing public, trying to play the role of Lacon, but not even selling his music career at all in that house. And I was wondering, bloody hell, what is this guy you were doing in that place? He tried to play the card of the lover boy. And then just hours or days after buying <laughs> flowers for Sasuke, he was kicked out of the house. <laughs> so. You know what? I know the casino, I'm just being petty. But <laughs> BJ is saying, Bibi and Sandy housemates uh, were very dramatic. There were there were no observers. Hence, they constantly had fights and competitions with each other. Exactly. Bring it on. You go into that house, you're going to fight for something. So stop acting all laid back and smooth and suave. I mean, there's, there are times and moments you can actually dish that part of you to the viewing audience. Anyways, I just know that maybe with, with Bibi and Zanzi, I don't think there's going to be that space for people to actually come and sit down and lay back. So there are three more categories of housemates that the organizers actually put out there. There's the strategist, there's the snitches, and there's the manipulators. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to just go ahead and share the link to this conversation. 
I'm going to share the link to this conversation right now in the comment section below. So guys, please go ahead. If you want to have this conversation with me, just go ahead and click on the link and I'm going to add you right now and then we can start this conversation. <laughs> I get some interesting sector, yeah, savage. I know. I know I'm savage. And I get this way when I've been ringing something in people's heads and then they're thinking that it's actually big and you don't know that that is actually the truth. That I am seeing it. And then it happens. It makes me feel good that it actually happens. But it's all well I'm good. So whilst we are waiting for you guys to join the conversation, <laughs> while we are waiting for you guys to join the conversation, I'm just going to go ahead and start off on um, the other housemates, the strategist. Now, See, eh, if there's anybody that I'm actually really looking forward to, any housemate that I'm actually really looking forward to, but this new season of Baby in Zambia, it's going to be the strategist. Now, I've heard a lot of things about South Africans. I've heard about how dramatic it can be. I've heard about how crazy, interesting, smart, exciting, entertaining, but specifically vengeful and petty they can be. And so it's making me look forward more to that person that is going to come into the house with the spirit of strategy, you know, that strategist. Okay, what did that during the last season of April and Niger? We had, um, we had white money, number one. We had Pere, number two. You know, Pere came into the house and played a card that nobody has ever played before in the person of a male gender. I mean, we saw Tacha play a card like that during the Pepe Dem Gang season, you know, being the antagonist against all the other housemates and all the other housemates being against that child. And then it really, really, it kind of flowed, you know, because she's female. So in this part of Nigeria, people expect that the females are mostly troublesome and restless. But then Perry came into the house and played a similar card. And oh my days, it worked, to be very honest. It worked. Yeah, although at some point, I did not like Perry. But then later, I like him because he gave up a speech in his crib and he worked out well. Hello. Hi. Hi, Yolanda. Hi, Gifty. Hi. How are you guys doing? Fine, thanks. And how are you? I'm great. So can you guys increase the volume of your audio? Like increase the volume. So is it better? Yeah, so speak, speak up so I can hear you. Can you hear me clearly? <clears throat> oh, can you hear me now? Awesome, awesome. How are you guys doing? How are you guys doing? You're fine. Okay, so let's start with Yolanda. Yolanda, which part of the world are you from, first of all, before I ask you this question? Oh, I'm from oh. South Africa. Woo! Hey! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how excited I am. <laughs> awesome. Here, you're going to be my co anchor for this particular conversation. So just hang in there. I hope you have enough data because you're going to be helping us with a lot of things, right? So I mentioned something a few minutes ago before you jumped on the call. I talked about characteristics of a typical South African, especially one that is going to be participating in Big Brother in Sandy. What do you think we should expect being a fellow South African? What do you think we should expect? Um, to be honest with you, I feel like you're going to expect um, people from the hood. It's going to be someone from the hood. Um, but I think it's going to be like a male. because It's normally a male. But uh, maybe I might be wrong. But I think it's going to be someone from the hood. There's going to be someone that is already famous. Uh, maybe like a slave queen of some sort. Uh, Instagram or something like that. There is also going to be, uh, who is this thing? The quiet one, the one who does things that when you're like, ah, I didn't expect this from this person, there's going to be that girl or that boy that's always going to be surprising us. Um, yeah, and there's going to be the, 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 the cycle. There's always a cycle. There's going to be a cycle. There's going to be a cycle here. So <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> that is very interesting. You know, not to come across as being a real person myself, I always love it when there is a cycle in the house. <laughs> I love it when there is a cycle in the house. You know, there's always that one person that switches things up. Because to be very honest, in our everyday lives, I'm sure everybody wants peace of mind. Everybody just wants to just chill, 
laid back, no worries in life. But then in a show like Big Brother, Zambi, surely there must be that one person that is very, very restless, that just wants to just start off things, that just see people reacting overall, yeah. So another question is, did you follow up on the previous seasons of the show? Yes, 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 I did. Well, I've followed Big Brother since... <laughs> I followed Big Brother since I was nine. Yes, I used to be that girl. <laughs> um, the, the, the first season, I think, was the season of um, um, Cat and, 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 and um, people like that. Um, and and it, it was it was really fun. It was really fun. Um, Cat was the girl that um, people didn't like because, like Angel, she was very um, out there. She used to go around, maybe kissing guys, flirting around. But the thing about her, she wasn't nasty. Like, she was classy in a way. I don't know how to explain it. But still, a lot of people were like, ah, she's using her beauty or things to, to get what she wants and stuff like that. So, um, what else do I remember from the first season? Oh, yeah, there was Umanda, the guy from the cast. Very funny guy. There's a reason why he won. He was he was really lovable. He was he, he was yeah he was lovable, and he had a love interest with this um other beautiful girl. Her name was Ulex. Ah, uh, Ulexi, she didn't uh, mind running around the house naked. Uh, it was she yeah she was that girl. <laughs> wow. wow wow yeah. And do that you know what's funny? So interesting. And do you know what's funny? When they started, he said that um he was gonna use her as a pawn. Um, he, he was gonna use her as a pawn um, to be like in his game and stuff. But then at the end of the show, they got really serious. They even got a reality show together. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, they, oh my god. Now this is making me want to go on my knee and beg Bibi Nigeria or Bibi Zambia to just open channel one nine eight because I really want to go for this shirt. Okay. Um, I'm gonna bring back um. Yeah, so okay, great. Your audio is better now. Your audio was really broad. You're welcome to the conversation. Only male and platform. Yes, but um, let me not give give you. Give you. Okay. Hi. Uh, yeah, so okay, great. Gifty, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so I think somebody has more to together and I can hear myself as going back. So if that person can have one gadget and use the headphones so that we can hear our first thing. Otherwise, we have to leave one question. Um, okay, I think it's. um. Zanun, Zanun, you have to you have to uh, mute one of your gadgets. All right, it's a lot. Um, so, Gifty, where are you okay. from? Um, actually, where? Hello, Gifty. Where are you calling? Where are you joining from? Ah, Gifty, you're wasting our time. Let Ghana. Oh, you're from Ghana. Okay, okay, Gifty. It's nice to have you on here. On here. Um, I think I have followed on any of the DB and Zambi seasons before now. Yes, please. You have. Which of the seasons do you follow up on? Um. Um. What's Big Brother ah, Africa? Yes, Sorry. Sorry. Big Brother Africa. Okay, we're Africa. Nice, nice. So let me just ask you this question, yeah? The organizers of the show, they've highlighted about six different types of housemates that all the viewers should be expected. We've talked about three already. So there's the underdog, the lover, the observer, and then there's the strategist, the snitch, the one that attracts snitches, and then there's the manipulator. Of the remaining three, yeah, which one is your favorite? Which one is your favorite type of housemate? Um, the recent one was Angel. No, so wait, 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 you didn't get the question, right? So there's the strategist type of housemate, okay? There is the housemate that attracts snitches, people who gossip, right? You can call the person a gossip as well. And then there is the manipulator. 
you know, the kind of writing character, the one that instigates things. Yeah. So which one is your favorite type of housemaid? I'm sneaking around. The sneaking around. Okay, that is the snitch. The one that gossips around. Why yes. do you <laughs> why do you like the gossip? <laughs> why? No. What? what? Okay, you know what? Let me ask you, Yolanda. Yolanda, let me pose the same question to you. Which of these housemates here? Yeah, from out of the manipulator, the snitch, and the strategist, which one is your favorite type of housemate? Um, <laughs> just anyone who brings drama. I don't care who, how you do it. I just want drama. I want to be entertained. I don't want you to be predictable. I just want drama. As long as you bring drama for me, I, I, I fully support you. <laughs> okay. okay. So I, I love the fact that you said you want drama. But let me ask you, yeah? what is the definition of drama? Yeah. Let's oh. use, let's use the season that you have watched, the season of BB in Zanzi that you have watched. As an example, so because I want to, I know the definition of drama with Big B Ninja. I know, right? And there is a pattern to drama, if any. Now, for Bibi in Zambi, I have never experienced your own kind of drama. So, in that setting, <laughs> in that milieu, please let us know what is what is the definition of drama. For me, um, the true definition of drama is someone who is real. Someone who is real, not saying that someone must insult, going around insulting people and, and doing all those things. No. The definition of drama is you being yourself and us knowing that, okay, this person is themselves. They forget themselves. They burp. They, 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 they just, they're not camera cautious. Like they, they don't look at the camera all the time. One thing that irritates me is someone who has studied the previous season and then they are like, you know what? I want to do it like this one. Oh, I want to do it like this one. Because you don't stand we don't remember you as that person. We remember you as um, maybe Yolanda who played the strategy of mercy or Yolanda who played the strategy of Tatcha. We don't know you individually. So for me, drama is someone like, oh man, okay, I'll, I'll just go back to Manja because there's a reason why that man won, especially in Big Brother. Oh Manja, he was not camera conscious. He was funny. He was being himself. He did everything, but you could sense that it was genuine. He wasn't trying to play a script. When he was angry, he was angry. When he was... You know what? In the mood, he was in the mood. He was just himself. You could say you can really relate to whatever that he was going. Through. He was that bad. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. for me, it, 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 it's someone like that. Oh, and also, I remember there was a season of Big Brother Africa. I don't know season what I can't remember, but there was this other South African representative. His name was Keegan, and he also won that season because he was true and he was really, really, really entertaining because he was mm -hmm. that type to. Maybe if Big Brother doesn't give them alcohol, he's going to go inside the diary room and strike and be like, Big Brother, we are not going to, uh, what is this thing, entertain Africa because we want alcohol, we want food, we want, like that type of, I like people like that. Like, he was that person. Yeah. Okay. That's funny for me. Okay, okay, okay. I really love what you talked about, the carefreeness, the carefreeness. And, you know... <laughs> Over time as well in Big Brother Niger. KK, you're welcome. We're not ignoring <laughs> you. All right. We're coming back to you. So if you over time with Big Brother Niger, you get to see a lot of people that try to bring such drama and also try to be carefree. But along the line, you catch them in their moment of being unaware. And then you know that, oh, this person is actually playing the script. I'll give you an mm. example from the last season, the Shire Eye season. Angel came across as that one housemate that was being carefree and just living the best life and doing whatever. But then I cannot count the number of times I caught this girl. <laughs> I cannot count the number of times I caught her in that moment of being unaware that, ah, so this is what you've been doing, you know, trying to alter her script or trying to calculate, oh, the next thing she will do to invest in the emotional banks of the viewers. At that point in time, I just lost it. I'm like, okay, no way. You cannot continue to give me for a ride. 
And then another person that did that, I think it was the MRO ship. And that's why to tomorrow, it still feels as though I never believe it. I never, because if you, you see people that are coming up as being real, and then boom, something they do in the house, you catch them and you just know that, oh my God, this is what they They know what they are doing, right? So comparing those two settings now, maybe in Nigeria, maybe some of in the, in the midst of all of that realness that people be shot like that, do you think there's about been those set of housemates that are very, very camera conscious and they know that, okay, what they are doing with the camera is watching that they want to do more? I, I do think there will be people like that because at the end of the day, we are ruled by um, Instagram and all those things. So these people, they didn't just come here because they want the experience. They came here because they want to build a brand for themselves. And, you know, as a brand ambassador, you need to conduct yourself in such a manner that even the brands are, will be comfortable in working with you. But if you're that person who is very unpredictable and says things that are very controversial, maybe about race or, or gender or anything that related to that, then of course you're not going to get sponsorships or, or any deals. So of course, if they do bring, do you know what I wish though? I wish they don't bring people that are already famous because it's going to be unfair for the locals that enter the competition. I'm not shading Lika Rose. I'm not shading her. But it was quite evident that the moment she stepped into the house, she was going to go to the finals because exactly. she already had a huge fan base. And for me, I feel like for you to have a fan base, you need to work at it. Make us want to vote for you. You know, don't come here already with your 200,000 followers. I mean, it's not fair for me. Yeah. At um, I'm thinking. True, I definitely agree. I, I think we had that conversation. KK, do you remember? I think we had that conversation about the numbers mm -hmm. that she had. Yes, but anyways, K, you're actually welcome. And let me introduce Yolanda specially to you. Yolanda is based in South Africa, and so she's giving us some hints about you know what to expect from the in this year three. That is, if we get to watch the show. But the question I want to ask you now, KK, is of all these types of housemates. If you were to watch Vivian Zambi, which of them are you expecting? The strategy, the, the, just call that one the gossip, then the manipulator. Which of them would you like to see? Honestly, I'm just thank you very much, Lori. I I would just want somebody who will just be free spirited. Don't manipulate, don't gossip, just be yourself. You know, somebody like somebody like um cross. Somebody like Cross, mm. be yourself. Just you know, do your thing. Catch your phone. If you win, yeah. you win. If you don't win, no problem. But just be yourself. You know, play the game the way it should be played. Don't beef anybody. Don't gossip any. Don't fight. You know, just be free. Just like Cross. That's what I want to see. Somebody who is free spirited. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, do you like, because now you have not not really answered my question. Properly. So let me ask you again. <laughs> I want you to choose. So there's the manipulative housemate, right? There's a manipulative housemate. I don't want to mention name of ex -BB Niger housemate so that nobody will come for me and they will go. Rah, rah, rah. Mm -hmm. And then there's the, the strategy. So look at it this way. You've seen different pieces of BB Niger, right? You've seen those ones who are very, very strategic. And some, it worked. Some, it did not work. And then there are those ones who are very, very manipulative. Some, it worked. Some, it did not work. From all what you've seen, which one do you really like? Like, which one do you prefer of those two types of assets? Now, I would, I, would always, uh, I would always prefer the strategist. I don't have any problem with that. Go into the house with your strategy and try to play your game. That's what I'm saying, you know. I would definitely prefer the strategist. Mm -hmm. I mean, what's the need gossiping people? What's the need manipulating? Be yourself, yeah, but go with your strategy and just play your game. Mm -hmm. For me, that's it. Okay, so Yolanda, let me ask you. Now, between the strategist and the manipulator, in others and previous seasons of BB in Zambi, which one always gets through to the end? Not necessarily winning now, but which one normally gets through to the end of the show? Um, I would say that the, the person who gets to the end is the manipulator. I'll tell you why. The strategist, well, as much as we, we are all like, yeah, it's all about strategy and stuff, it, it, it becomes scripted in a way. We, we, we know what to expect from you. It. it becomes boring. It's repetitive. 
But mm. with someone who's a manipulator, it's like one of those things about, yo, we didn't see it coming. Yo, yo, yo. He did this to, to whoever. Or, hey, I don't trust man. man. Like, you're always on your toes because you, you don't know how they think or what they think because they always are two steps ahead of everyone else. And that's what makes the game even more interesting. So being a manipulator, you know, but this one is friends with this one, but why is she entertaining this one as well? And then you're trying to get into their mind. And the more you do it, the more it's entertaining for you as the viewer. You're like, okay, I'm trying to figure this person out, but you're not really figuring the person. Rather than the strategist, who you know what to expect. I, 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 I totally agree with both of you. However, I want to also point something out. I don't know if you people all noticed that during the Shire I season, in the top six housemates that were left at the finals, did you guys notice that of all the top six of all of them, there were two most powerful housemates in that set? Two most powerful housemates, like the two housemates that played their game in the most powerful way. Yeah? There were just two of them out of that four. It wasn't the Coros, to be very honest. If you ask me, the Coros didn't really do anything in that house. I agree. Aside the task that she was winning, she didn't really do anything. There was nothing spectacular that she was doing. No. She already had the fame. She already had the support. So her fans were easy voting. And she had a girl group that also had a huge following. And so they were giving her votes and all. So there wasn't anything special, spectacular that she was doing. Emmanuel was just like a tag along, you know, riding on the wings of being associated with Nicholas by virtue of we are in a so-called chief. Cross, adorable, sweet, funny, quirky, very weird human being. He made it through. For me, the two most powerful housemates in that shiny eye season, top six, were White Money and Angel. White Money played the card of the strategist and he played it to perfection. He played a script that nobody in the history of Bibi Nigeria has been able to pull through. And he made it through what he won. And then Angel plays the script or the role of the manipulator. See, when you are looking for someone that plays the script of a manipulator to perfection, call Angel for me. As in, in as much as she did different, you know, shady things, but it took her to the finals and I'm like, wow, okay. This girl was telling about what she was looking for, you know? So if you ask me the same question I asked you guys, I am looking forward to seeing the manipulator again. Because for the strategy, mm -hmm. Wonder is actually a very, very good strategist. They always tend to find their way to the final. They always tend to find their way to the final. But instead of manipulator, it's very rare to see them finding their way to the final because they are playing a very, very dicey role. Now, it's a very sensitive card they are playing. You are toying with the viewer's emotions. You are toying with the emotions of the your, of your fellow housemates as well, right? Mm -hmm. Now you could you could either make people love you or make people extremely dislike you. And when you have people disliking you, sometimes it could be a positive, sometimes it could be a negative. It could be a negative in the sense that they say, "No, let's both this person out by giving more support to other people to make it to the top." It could be a positive when they now dislike that person so much that they want the person to remain in their house for other housemates to deal with the person. So it's a positive in that way. Now the viewers, they think they're actually teaching that person a lesson, but they're actually doing the person a favor because they are increasing the person's chances of getting to the final, right? So I think with Angel, when Angel was doing mental headache, mental headache, mental stress, people wanted, so I knew some people wanted to deal with her you know, so they wanted her to be in the household because of what she did with this person. They wanted her to be in the but they didn't know that they were actually increasing this girl's chances of getting to the final, right? So for me, I think <laughs> I really, really love that person, that housemate that can strongly play their card as a manipulator. Brighto did it as well. And it really saddened me that he did not start it from the beginning. I feel like um, during the lockdown season, if he had actually started playing the card of a manipulator from the, from the first week, he would have had a strong fan base that would have really wanted him to stay through 
to the finance. But because he started playing that manipulative card late, so the fan base that he was able to garner at that point in time wasn't really strong enough to see him through to the final. But then Angel came and took over from where he stopped and did well. Okay, you wanted to say something? No, not, not actually. No. I agree, with, I agree with what you're saying, but it's only that you ruled out, uh, uh, what's his name again? The person that came taught. So how would you describe his own? Is it not, oh, was, it, was it not, sorry? Parent. Yeah, parent. Was he, was he manipulated? Parent, okay, oh, nice question. So parent actually played both cards. But now, mm -hmm. where he actually missed his own was he did not stay true to that first card he started playing. And that's the thing about the strategist and the manipulator. If you want to be the strategist, if you want to play the particular card, the people who have grown to like you because of that card you're playing, they're expecting you to stay true till the end of the, the show, right? So Pera started as the antagonist. Oh, I don't like white money. People did not like Pera, including me. We did not like what Pera was doing, but it was exciting. It was giving us that toxic energy. It was not mm. healthy. But it was exciting. It was giving us the thrill. It's like watching an action movie or a horror movie. And you want, you know that what is about to happen is bad, but you want to see it happen because it's going to give you the thrill. So Pele yeah. was busy giving us the thrill up until week five. And then the moment Maria was evicted, you know, on unprecedentedly, Pele now started changing. So even when the cat came back and asked him, oh, Pele, what happened? You've changed, blah, blah, blah. People were still expecting her to deal with um, this saga over the gossip. That was an opportunity. That was an opportunity for Perry to bring. Imagine if, after what Ibuka said, Perry had gone back into his villain mood and he had come out and, oh, saga, I'll deal, you know, and he had done something sneaky just as he actually triggered white money. Trust me. Even though Perel does not win, I don't know. He probably would have come second or something. I don't know. But people would have still, you know, be pushing him. You know, that kind of thing. So he played that card. And he also played the manipulative card. You know, those times when he would try to manipulate the fellow housemates into disliking white money strategy and all of that. Yeah. He played the card to perfection. But then he missed it from week five. He missed it from week five. Now, where he missed it was when he now went into the good books. <laughs> He went into the good book of being the good guy that is very, very forgiving, the good guy that helped his friend to find his girlfriend, you know, that kind of thing, yeah. you know, <laughs> but he missed it. Uh, anyways, let me welcome Hank's man. Hello. Hi. You know, I joined you last week. We can't hear you. You can't hear me. No, we can't hear you. I can hear I can hear him actually. I can hear you. Oh, you can hear? Yeah. Okay, thanks, man. Can you say something? Let me see can if you I can hear you. Can you hear me now? Oh yeah, I can hear you, but it's really far away. Let me come closer to you. How are you? How's your day going? Very well, thank you. You know I joined you last week from the hospital. What the did you say? The, the guy in the hospital last week. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. Yeah, I remember. Oh, I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The last person, yeah. the last Person. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you, Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. So, yeah. Hansman, before I go ahead to ask you questions, I'm seeing some very, very interesting comments in the comment section. Let me see. Um, um, Karen is saying our housemates need to play their game and not be a carbon copy of the previous set, depending on the name of this coming edition. So let's do this in Zambia. The rest of Africa is anxiously waiting. Interesting. Okay. Um, B. JJ said, Para changed the strategy once Maria left. Very true. Um, Evelyn said, I think Dorothy tried to play that game too. Mm, partially. 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 Okay. So quickly, let's just go back to Hans Mann. Um, which country are you joining from? I'm joining you from Austria. Sorry? Wow. From Austria. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Austria. Yeah. I'm not, I don't think you people can actually watch BB in Zambi. True? I, I nah. don't think. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, nah. You can't. But if you can't. it's online. Well, anyway, 
let me just go ahead and ask you the question, right? So from all the types of housemates, Bibi in Zanzi, Bibi Naija, which one is your favorite? The lover, the strategist, the manipulator, the gossip, the observer. Which one is your favorite? Yeah, I like two types, two types of people. Huh? Sorry? The, the two types of people. I like the lover and the snitch. <laughs> yeah. Please tell us why. <laughs> you, remember, you remember when um, this girl that got involved with, with Boma, what is her name again? I forgot her name. Tega. Yeah, Tega was playing the role of the snitch. You know, she was playing, she, she, from, the, from onset, she was playing everything perfectly. You know, anything she sees, she, 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 said, she said it the way she saw it. On yes. she, what made them to evict that lady was because of what she did with Boma. Yeah. Exactly. She, I agree. She, I agree with you. She made us know uh, who was having a bath with another person. You know, anything. I like that type of people. You see, when she was playing that card, she was okay in the house. Yeah. Unfortunately, she yeah. did not know. Yeah, those are the type of people I like to <laughs> see. If uh, Big Brother and Zanzi will be online, I will, I will, I will watch it. Yeah, true. I actually, I actually love, and thank you so much for that beautiful reminder. I actually really love Tega's rule at that point in time, you know, except that she lost focus. And mm -hmm. I think that was the same thing that Brito was actually doing. You know, Brighton will go and tell exactly. um, his wife this. go and tell Erica that Brighton will go and tell Lecon. You will not take what Lecon said and go and tell somebody else. Oh my God, that was an exactly. excellent yeah. strategy. Yeah, so I really agree. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So moving on, you said you also like the lover. Tell us love. why. Give us the your lover time. is in now. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think? The lover and big brother is everything. <laughs> So you're one of those there. Not many of them get evicted. Yeah. Yeah, true. Yeah, because, you know, people want to see a lot of things in Big Brother just to keep them busy, you know? But I like the lovers there, I like, I like, I like, I like lovers also. You're right, you're right. And, and you see, you see, as long as there's a show called Big Brother, as long as there's a franchise shown all around different countries, different parts of the world, there's always going to be those set of persons that are going to be the couple. And because love is with, love is a universal language, you know, people might not really understand this and traditions of Nigeria or South Africa or Canada or or any country that a big brother and a big brother show is airing at that point in time. But people will definitely understand love when they see it. People will definitely recognize love when they see it. And I think that also explains why most of the time people are people gravitate towards the couples on shows like that. Yes, they want to see how they want to see the possibility. Why is my network retreating? Okay, so people want to see the possibility of a love relationship starting, blooming, and even growing, you know, in a confined space with different characteristics of people and personality interfering in the growth of that relationship. So I think that is another thing. So, Hansman, I actually agree with you. <laughs> But tell us the truth. Are you one of those shippers? You know, I am not in Nigeria. I cannot ship from here. It's people who <laughs> people who are at home. They are the ones who ship, you know. <laughs> but uh, somebody that I even find it very difficult to watch. I only watch from your videos, um, yeah. other YouTubers. That is just... But before I used to, I watched before, but... Yeah. Anyways, anyways, um, I think we've actually said a lot. I don't really, I don't want to drag the conversation anymore. Yes. So, um, 
I think this is where we're just going to end this particular segment, this particular conversation. We're going to wait. I'm still doing my findings to see, number one, if Big B in Zanzi is going to air in Nigeria. I'm also trying to do my own findings to see if it's not going to air, if there's any other way that I can watch the show and give updates to, you know, those people that might not also have access to the show. So, Sorry? Is it on DSTV? Yeah, it, of course, it's going to be aired on DSTV, but the channel 198 is currently not sharing in it's Nigeria. Not Sorry? Not show Max. No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's a very, I don't know why, but it's just very, very dicey. So I'm going to do all my findings, and whatever happens, I will definitely update you guys by tomorrow before the show launches. So... Fingers crossed. Let's see how it works out. Thank you so much, Yolanda. You've been of great help to us. <laughs> because Thank of you. you now, I'm seriously hyper. Like, I'm seriously <laughs> hyper. I really want to, you know, see how the show is going to turn out to be. Thank you so much, KK. Um, always cool and cool. Thank you so much, Hansman. <laughs> um, I'm going to have tomorrow? to let you all go so I can find out properly. Have an amazing, amazing weekend. Bye, guys. Okay. Bye. Bye. Okay, guys. Thank you all so much for joining this conversation. Um, wow. I told you guys I did not want this live stream to exceed one hour, but hey, you know how we do over here. Once the conversation starts, it don't start with that. We get to talk and talk, and sometimes we talk for three hours. But it's all well and good. We talked about two things, you know, um, restricted countries for Big Brother and Zandi that's about to launch tomorrow. We are still going to find out. Um, the complete list of countries that have been restricted, and then also see if FSWG can actually give 24 hours updates as usual. Um, let's see how that's going to work out. Um, what else? We also talked about housemates, types of housemates to expect for the new season of Baby Zanzi. And I am super excited already, thanks to Yolanda, for giving us some hints on the types of housemates that have actually participated on previous seasons of Baby and Zanzi. Now that's it, guys. I'm going to have to end this particular episode of Frankly Speaking with Glory Elijah's Saturday YouTube live stream. Thank you all so much for joining the conversation. Thank you all so much for giving your opinion, giving your thoughts, and um, <laughs> have an amazing day. Have an amazing day. Enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm looking for something to play. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.